Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on foundation level sample paper discussions. We are talking about the set B of the sample paper and looking still at the chapter 1. In previous tutorial, we have covered some of the questions from the chapter 1 and in this tutorial, we will be covering the remaining questions of the chapter 1 to understand how exactly the questions can be framed out during the examination and what is the best way to answer them and be sure about your right answer. Right? Let's get started. The very first question looking today is the question number 5. As a result of risk analysis, more testing is being directed to those areas of the system under test where initial testing has found more defects than average. Which of the following testing principles is being applied here? Now the most important thing is before looking at the options, you should recall your knowledge and get to the answer yourself first because we have 7 standard principles only. And now each of the principles has a unique point to talk about. For example, if you say exhaustive testing, it says we cannot try with all combination, right? Testing exhaustively a particular system. Early testing is talking about prevention of the defects. Defect cluster is talking about defects grouping together at one particular place or one particular module or a particular functionality or maybe a component, right? And pesticide paradox is more about, uh, you know, repeating a particular test again and again with no intention. Context dependent is all about uh, that different projects are tested differently. It's all about the test approach and absence of error fallacies to make sure that the requirements are met. No matter how many defects you find, at the end of the day, it should be meeting the expectations of the customer. And whereas the first principle is telling you that you cannot do complete testing, where the principle says testing shows presence of defect, not their absence. So with that given quick notes of each of the principle, you can very well relate that this particular question is talking about defects, right? And there's only one principle which we have as a part of our entire set of principle which talks about defect. That is defect cluster together. No other principles are addressing the defect point. So I think it's very simple and straightforward. It, it becomes more easier for you to pick up the right answer and be sure, more importantly, be confident that you are answering it right, right? Because always you can pick up an answer, but how to be sure that your answer is right or not? That is completely based on the content understanding and the knowledge what you have gained as a part of all your understanding. So right answer here is D, defects clustered together is the principle we are talking about in order to address or you know direct more testing to these areas where you found defects more than the average let's look at the next question here which is question number six i think i call it as the most complicated question because if you don't remember one they give you many to answer them right so very first thing here is they are talking about the test process which is having the entire test process and several activities under that. And here the question is all about, given the following test activities and the task, match them the following, right? Put them together, that how exactly A, B, C, D matches with on the right side, one, two, three, four. So a very wonderful tip to deal with this match the following type of questions is to start with the option which you are 100% sure about. For example, I can pick up any one of these because I'm sure about all four of them. But still, let's consider I'm sure about uh, analyzing discrepancy to determine their causes. Now, analyzing discrepancy is all about identifying the root cause of a defect. So sometimes, the, you know, the defect, it will not be written as defects. They will write it as analyzing discrepancy, which is, which is in simple term called as finding out the root cause. So root cause, everybody knows, oh, root cause, finding root cause is a part of the test execution. But analyzing discrepancy, you may get confused that where does actually this happens? I'm not sure about it, right? So this is where you need to be sure about that what exactly analyzing discrepancies is all about and where exactly it happens. Of course, analyzing discrepancy happens once the defect is reported and the defect reported or defect is being reported during the test execution. So I can relate number four to the C on the left, because this is one of the activity which happens during test execution. Now let's say the next thing which I'm sure about is prioritizing test procedure. 
Now, test procedure is a unique word which is used only in test implementation. It does not appear in test design, test implementation, sorry, test analysis, test design, test planning, or even in test execution and so on. It only appears in test implementation, so I'm pretty much sure that it goes with the test implementation. That is B. So when I'm done with 3 and 4, getting B and C, I can easily sort out my options at the given option. Right? We don't given four options. Still, I'll complete this and continue doing that, which is I'll look into the statement number two. It says identifying test data to support the test cases, which goes with test design. Right? The test data is identified for the test cases while designing the test cases, and it's a part of the test design, which goes to the A. Now you're left with just one option, which is entering change request for open defect reports, and that's all part of the test completion, because managing the defects which you could not close will be a part of the test completion phase where you document it and capture all that information. So the right answer here is A, A goes to two, B goes to three, C goes to four, and D goes to one, mapping all the activities with their respective task. Let's look at the next question here, which is question number seven. Which of the following best describes how value is added by maintaining traceability between the test bases and the test artifacts? Here the importance is traceability. So what are the benefits of having traceability in place? Not you need to do you need, you need not to be worried about what is test basis, what is test artifacts here. It's more importantly they're trying to ask you what is traceability and what's their benefit. So let's look at the option A. Maintenance testing can be fully automated based on changes to their initial requirement. I think uh, that is a different concept altogether that maintenance testing has a lot of regression testing and regression testing is always a good candidate of automation. But automating that fully is not justifiable. You know, you don't, don't have any such statement so far that 100% automation is possible, right? To a certain extent, I can say 99.99% Possibility is there for automation, but not 100%. Anyways, that has nothing to do with the traceability. Automating regression testing for maintenance is different than what we are talking about as traceability. Let's look at B. It is possible to determine if a new test case has increased coverage of the requirement. Yeah, this is something which is related to traceability. For example, if I have a requirement and I've got three test cases written for it, and it has achieved 50% coverage on the requirement. If I add two more test cases, I would always have the traceability to the requirement, which would tell me in turn that if the trace, you know, coverage has increased, like 60% or 70%, and that can only be measured until unless you have the traceability between the tests and the requirement. Again, this is just an example, right? So traceability can help you to tell that if it has, has increased the coverage, on the requirements or not. C, the test manager can identify which testers found the highest severity defects. I'm not sure why a test manager would look forward to that information, uh, probably to encourage or reward that person. Yes, that's good. But I don't think that has any relationship with the traceability because traceability has nothing to do with identification of the person who find highest severity items. All you can do is apply a filter and get the output. Coming to D, areas that may be impacted by the side effect of change can be targeted by confirmation testing. By now, if you have been through tutorial one and two and chapter one and two, you know that confirmation testing is all about confirming a fix of the defect, not regression testing, right? But the statement is saying the side effects check is done by regression testing. And both of them has nothing to do with a benefit of traceability. Yeah, regression to a certain extent can be included, but the statement is not correct. They're talking with the regression, concluding with the confirmation. So the right answer here is B, it is possible to determine if a test case has increased coverage of the requirements by having traceability between test bases and the test artifacts. Moving ahead with the question number eight, which of the following qualities is more likely to be found in a tester's mindset rather than a developer's? And this is all about the psychology of testing. So you need to start thinking about the ability of a tester 
to understand that what a tester must possess, which is different than a developer. So a tester mindset tends to grow and mature as the tester gains experience. Yep, that's one of the thing which happens, but this is not something kind of a likely to be found as a tester mindset. We are talking about the theory that as you grow with the experience, your mindset, you know, get, even grows equally. But this is applicable to anyone. Even a developer grows with this mindset as he grows with experience, not just alone the testers. But here we are talking about the comparison between a developer's mindset with that of the testers. B. Ability to see what might go wrong. Why would a developer would have this vision? Because he never wants to see the mistakes. He's never worried about what can go wrong. It's the tester who should be worried about what things can go wrong in my application so I have a test case to cover it. If you can anticipate the mistakes of the developer, if you can anticipate the complexities or criticality in the product, you will have better test cases or better defects being found during testing. So yes, this could be one of the mindsets of the tester. C, good communication with team members. Team members, I think everyone in the organization must have this skill or mindset. And D, attention to detail. I think the whole team should give a respect to the details of all the inputs, including requirement management, design, testers, developers, everyone should give attention to detail. There's no significant difference between a developer and mindset on attention to detail. So that gives a clear picture to us that the right answer here is B, ability to see what might go wrong is unique about testers mindset when compared to developers. Right? So that's all from this particular tutorial team where we covered some of the remaining questions from the chapter one. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.